Okay, so we're going to now see how we can use a data interpreter to load some text data and Apache log data into the database. So as you see here, I have the database started on my computer and it says Blob City DB started in, in two seconds. So, and I have some Apache log data that I've taken. So let's have a look at the data. Here we go. So I've taken some log entries uh, from an actual Apache server logs and these are access logs of the Apache and we're gonna try and take this four data points, four separate entries and load them into the database and then run some queries on it. So which is we're gonna actually push in textual data into the database, convert it using an interpreter into a structured counterpart and then be able to run queries on the structured counterpart. So let's look at the code that I'm gonna use for the demo. So uh, this code basically, so these are my connection credentials. Then I am going to read data, which is the sample log data using a simple buffered reader in Java. And each line that I get from the log file, I add it to a list called log entries list, which is defined here. Now I'm also printing this just so that we know what is getting imported into the database. Now, once we've populated this list, list of you know, records that we wanna enter, uh, I'm gonna use the function called db.insertText, and this is gonna insert the text into a table called logs, and these are all the records that are gonna get inserted. Each, each element of the list will qualify for a different record inside the database. And I'm gonna use a log interpreter. This is an interpreter that I have defined and I've given the name as log interpreter. And I'm gonna invoke this interpreter for each element that I'm inserting. After doing this, I'm gonna basically just run simple count query. So you can, you can see that I actually added textual data into the database via this list, which came from direct Apache logs. And then I'm gonna run a count query which has a where condition on IP equals 127.0.0.1. So you wanna look at all the entries or how many entries rather that came from, how many requests came from 127.0.0.1. As a second query, we will also get all the entries that had a response code of 200. This is only for demonstration. So it's showing you the ability of how you can convert text data that you're putting into the product into structured counterparts as, as stored procedures within the database and, and then use it. So this logs class that we see here, so which is what is gonna get the records typecasted to, is, is defined here. This is nothing but a database entity and it extends DB, which DB is implemented by Blob City and it does the magic for wiring all these components together. And it's, it's located inside the data store called demo and the collection or commonly known as table called as logs. And you can see all these parameters including the auto-defined primary key that Blob City produces. So let's, let's look at the interpreter code, which is the interpreter that we're gonna use. And here we have the interpreter. So this interpreter is gonna be compiled and then loaded into the database as a stored procedure. We have a regular expression pattern that we're gonna to use to extract elements from the Apache log file. And, and we can see that uh, we were using matcher.group1, group2, group3, so we're extracting multiple groups uh, from the match that happens to the entries. So how the interpreter works is for every record that we passed here, right, each element of log entries list, uh, this function will get called for each element and, and that element will come here in this parameter for the interpreter. Now, it's at the discretion of this function to interpret the string in any manner desired and create it into a JSON object, which is a structured counterpart for that string. And we return the JSON object, or if we cannot interpret it, you can return null, right? And let's say we interpret it, and then we return a JSON object. Now this JSON object is what is going to get inserted into the table, and then you can search on any of these items, right, from, from, from the log files that came in. 
We also need a supporting manifest file, which is mandatory. So the manifest file specifies the name of the interpreter that is to be loaded. Uh, only classes mentioned in the manifest file are actually loaded by the database. So let's go back to where we were. So I have this database uh, up and running at the moment, so that's good. Now we have to take this, the, the stored procedure and, and load it into the product. So I have a compiled version of my stored procedure, which is the interpreter class. I have a compiled version of it here, and I'm gonna go into the target and I'm going to go into classes so you can see how I'm loading the interpreter. And there's a folder called com, which is basically the starting package, which is com.blobcd.sp.loginterpreter. So I have to take the whole package inside the database, right? So I'm going to do cp minus r dot slash, which is everything from the current directory, into the database directory, which apparently is, which I know the location to be, uh, at demo slash let's let's do one thing i'm not sure if i drop the database so telnet localhost 0113 now i'm getting into the command line interface of the database and i'm going to just make sure that i do not have any historic copy okay i had a historic copy so let's start by creating the database so you get an idea so i say create ds uh, which is a data store called demo and I say create collection demo.logs, which is the logs table that I want to create. And I'm going to create this table on disk because you may have a lot of Apache files can be very, very large and you don't want to store all that data in memory. So I've created this, this collection now. And we can look at the, which is fine. So we can look at the database and you know you can see that the collection is successfully created at this point in time. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to copy this data into the database, so which is at the location demo slash deploy db hot, right? So I'm going to copy all these classes into there. That doesn't solve my problem because I also need to copy the manifest file, which will be in the source, main, Java, and db code.mf. I have to copy this manifest file, so I'm going to say cp db code.mf. Uh, into slash db slash uh, data slash demo slash deploy db hot, which is the same location. I'm going to copy this. Now that we have both of them in, uh, let's look at this and, and let's look at what's happening here. So I am going to basically go in and uh, load the code. So I have to instruct the database to load the code for the entire uh, you know, database or the data store called demo. So it says all classes have been loaded successfully. Uh, let's go back. And yes, we can see that the load code uh, demo command executed. And yes, we have the log interpreter that we have written uh, now loaded into the database, right? Now, all we have to do is now I can get back to my original, let's leave this open because we might wanna see the logs. Now I can go back to uh, where my demo is right and i'm going to run this which is going to basically read this data insert this data and then fire the count query and the select search query onto the database so let's run this and here we go so we're going to run it and i'm going to say run and i'm going to continue anyway okay so here we have the output and there we go so it, it read these lines these are four separate records and it said inserting into the database and inserted all log records with interpretation into the database uh, it's done the job and then it went to searching the logged stable so which is which is at this point so the number of requests from 127.0.0.1 are two so we got two requests which is correct because we have only two requests the others are colon colon one and and it says found three log entries with response code 200, uh, which also is, is correct because we have only three entries with the response code of 200. This one exited with the response of 304. And we have successfully printed uh, these three log entries that have a response code of 200. And we can see uh, that this 
search. So where we started from is we started from textual records and we passed them through an interpreter and then we fired a select query that matched, that basically mapped the select response to an entity class called logs. And then we used the entity class for log.getIP, log.getTime, getMethod, getSize, and various other parameters that you can extract. So this is how you can, you can basically do uh, data interpretation. So if you look at the database consoles, uh, this is where we started from. We, we got some of the insert query initially, which got inserted into the database. And you can see the query is insert. And after that, we fired some search queries, which can be seen here, select count star from demo.logs, where IP is equal to this, and select star from demo.logs, where response code equals 200. Uh, the response count in this case was two, and this is the actual data set for the response for uh, the search query you fired. So this is how we can use the Blob City database for writing our own custom interpreters to be used with uh, text, text data, or any other data that you desire. Thank you.